Okay, welcome to another week of Monday Match Points. Uh, I am Jeff Staus, an assistant director here at the NSAA, uh, oversee volleyball. And our big topic today that we want to touch on is ball handling. Uh, I know there's been some questions and maybe even a little bit of confusion out there uh, given the rule change that happened in the college game. And so we wanted to make sure that before we got into our season that we properly addressed that and tried to get some information out. So before we dive all the way into that, uh, I'm gonna let the other three individuals on the call briefly introduce themselves and then we'll get right into the content. So Kim, would you go ahead and get started? Yes, I'm, um, hi, I'm, you say Ken or Kim? Either <laughs> one is fine. I'll, I'll go, um, I'm Kim Kwapnowski um, and I'm in Columbus and have officiated for 31 years. Ken, I'm, I'm Ken Pitkin, and I live in Callaway, Nebraska, which is in Custer County, and I officiated for 40 years and retired, and now I've worked several years for NSA as an observer and clinician. And I'm Craig Weedle. I live here in Omaha, Nebraska. This will be my 29th year of high school volleyball. I also uh, run USA Volleyball for the Great Plains, and I also officiate uh, uh, some college matches. So I kind of have involved in a lot of different aspects of the sport. As you can tell, we got a lot of experience uh, as a part of this call, and I'm the one, the new guy uh, that definitely has less knowledge than the other three on this call. So I'm real happy that they're a part of my team here. So with that, we're going to just dive right into uh, the, the topic of ball handling. And before I turn it over to Craig to take a deep dive, I just want to make sure that we're all clear that there has been no rule change in high school volleyball in terms of, of ball handling and, and second contacts. That is not anything that has changed um, in the NFHS rule book. I know there was a change in college, but uh, there has been no official rule change uh, in the high school game. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Craig and let him uh, dive in a little bit deeper. Perfect. Yeah, so I think ball handling is, especially for a new official and even for some season one, is one of the hardest things to do or to learn, um, maybe other than rotations. But one of the big things I've learned with ball handling is as long as you're consistent, coaches like that. So one of the things I learned early on was the first time you may call a double in a, in a match, that's when you're setting the pace for the rest of the match. So, so basically, if it, or that's when you insert yourself into the match. So that's one of the things I always try to do is I maybe wait maybe a couple plays before I would possibly call a double unless it's really egregious. Um, but sometimes I, I like to see kind of uh, what how the teams play before I insert myself into the match. Because if you don't do that, sometimes it's hard to get yourself out. And I've even had it where I've maybe called something too tight at the beginning and I own it. And coaches... I think respect that more than just to keep at that pace the entire match. Um, but that's one of the big things I think with the ball handling is just being consistent on both sides. Um, a couple other things that I, I, I always, um, I guess some rules of thumbs that I always have is as far as um, the second hit. So I usually for ball handling on the first contact, unless they really have prolonged contact, I let anything go. And then as the, the, the second hit or the third hit, I tighten it up a little bit more. Um, but one of the things that as the game of volleyball has changed, they want to keep the ball in play. So I don't want to make it so where it was maybe when I first started officiating that um, you would call every time the ball would spin a little bit, um, which has kind of changed now um, as far as the, 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 them wanting to keep the ball in play. So um one of the other things I've noticed too, and I used to do this early on is let's say that the ball goes into the net. And I think a lot of us just make an automatic call when they try to dig it out of the net. And we don't wait to see if it actually is prolonged contact. And I think it's just because it's something we've maybe always done, or it's what I call the automatic call. So that's one area I think that we should kind of try to, um, to, to watch this year is try to do that. A couple other things is um, the, uh, the third hit over or even the second hit, any times that you've had your completed attack and the balls go into the other side of the net, I think what happens with a lot of us and me included is sometimes I may move my eyes ahead and not actually see that third contact or the second contact. And then I and then all of a sudden I look over and the ball comes out looking like it's a helicopter. And I'm like, gosh, I should have waited a little bit longer on that. So I think that's one thing that we really should also 
um, look at. I also, is what I call the ooh factor, is if you hear the stands like going ooh or something, I probably should have blown the whistle. So that's one of another thing is I guess just know your audience or um, sometimes if I'm letting them play and it's like, okay, if I hear the crowd saying ooh or or double or whatever, I sometimes like, oh, maybe I should pay a little bit more attention. And then the last thing I want to talk about quickly is the, th the it's like the outside hitters or the right side. I think we see a lot of times that they almost catch and throw the ball down the line or to the spot where the defense is not there. So I think that's one other thing that I think we really should look at. And I know it's a point of emphasis in other levels of volleyball is if we don't want to make sure we want to make sure that the ball is defendable. So, and especially in the high school side where they're not as skilled maybe as the college side that a lot of times they actually do take the ball, catch it and throw it. And what I've learned with that is if you just call it once, they usually stop doing it. So there's are, those are just some of the main points that I, I look at personally when I think of ball handling. Kim, Ken, do you want to add anything else? Well, one of the things I would add, just on basic, remember the R1 is doing all the ball handling calls. The R2 is not. And the R2 can help if you want to in a discreet manner to the R1. But the R1 will blow the whistle on their judgment on all ball handling calls. And a few years ago, um, Volleyball was defined as a rebound sport. So just re emphasizing what Craig said, uh, you know, make sure that we don't have an automatic call because it can bounce around and it's rebounding. And if it's not resting or prolonged, let, let the girls play the ball. I guess I just want to ask Craig, when you see the um, hitter, you know, like taking it over or a, um, um, a power tip is kind of what they call it, I believe. Do you have any um, experience in regards to, I mean, if it's behind their head, in front of their head, where do you call it? Um, what, uh, actually learned this this last week at our clinic is if it's kind of in front, so like if they're pushing it in front, that's not so much, but if they're here and, and cocking their arm back and then throwing it, so it's kind of just the direction of your, the, the point of how you're tipping it, if that makes sense. Right, right. Yep. And so any, yeah, prolonged um, contact, that would be a lift. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Craig talked about, and that I know that these three preached all summer long at all of our officials clinics uh, that we talked about at our official summit earlier this month, and we talked about at coaches clinic in July, is just consistency in general. Um, I think that's what coaches, players, fans, really anyone is looking for is consistency. Um, and so as Craig alluded to, you know, if you start the match off and you're, you're calling the match at a, at a level that you don't think that you can sustain, there's nothing wrong with changing that, that level, um, as long as you're consistent then throughout the match, it's not something that you're going to want to change your uh, parameters from set to set. That's when we end up with, uh, frustration from all involved parties. And so, um, what we've truly really tried to preach uh, this entire summer and as we're trying to do right now, too, is just consistency in general. Um, players are good. Coaches are great. They can adjust um, if there's some consistency there. And so, um, Craig, thank you. Ken and Kim, thank you for the information on that. Um, I think that uh, that's a really good peek into um, just the world of ball handling in general. And so, uh, as always, you know, we're available. If there's questions, uh, feel free to reach out to any of, of, of these three that have a wealth of knowledge myself, uh, I'll likely tap into them for an answer. Uh, but we're all available to try to answer some of those questions as we get into the season that is somehow almost already here. And so uh, with that, uh, that's the end of our Monday Match Points for this week. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.